How are you all doing folks and welcome back to Alcamoto's Garage. Oh, a bit cold in here today, I'll have to put the heating on. Uh, we've not been in here for a while and the reason being is we've had no problems with the bikes at all. The Pan America has been running absolutely fantastic and so has the 48. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago we had a problem with the rear brake switch sticking on the 48. We had the front brake sticking a couple of years back which I did the fix for that which is another vlog of mine uh, if you've got that problem. But this one we're concentrating on the rear. Okay, so the rear brake switch is a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to because it's right behind the rear master cylinder. Uh, so you've got to remove that to get at the switch. But we'll bring you guys closer and just say we strip this one down. We'll show you what we've done so far and how to fix it and put it back together. Okay, folks. So if you can see down here, we've got the rear master cylinder is off. We've had to do away with the rear brake rod. So we just take that to one side. And of course, it depends what exhaust you've got, because with me having the two into one, uh, this is still in the way from here when you bolt this up. It's a little bit of a pain to get to. So you've got to disconnect this. If you have to remove your uh, rear silencer, you'll have to do that just to give you more access. But I can just get in to undo the bolts uh, with this still in place. OK, so what you're getting at is on the bottom of your rear master cylinder, you can see a bit dripping fluid there. Now you will lose a little bit of fluid, but not a lot to worry about. We can bleed the brakes through after we've finished. You can also give it a clean while it's off as well because of the dirt that just gets behind this component here, okay? So that's your rear master cylinder. And then your banjo bolt on your main line, which goes into the master cylinder, also has a little takeoff here, which is your pressure switch, which goes into this bit here. We'll just bring you guys closer. Okay, so you can just see it there. There's where your banjo goes into your master cylinder. And then this bit here has a tail off. And that's where your pressure switch is going. Just here. Okay, so the old pressure switch, which is this unit. This is what you're replacing. And then that goes into there. And then your two wires, obviously, on the back of that. This is the new unit here. And even this one, it says uh, for Volkswagen Audi. So it's not specific for Sportster. You don't have to pay the prices. Now, if you look for this uh, for a Sportster, you'd probably pay around 20 something pound for the switch. Whereas these ones you can get between sort of six pound or 14 pound, which is a massive difference. They're all different prices, but they're all the same switch. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of thread sealer remember always use a medium strength you don't need heavy duty high strength on this just a drop on there that's all you need pop the switch into here Okay, so the spanner size you want for this is a 5 8 on the original brake line here at the back. Now the switch I've bought uses a 7 8 switch on here. But of course if you buy from a different place it might be slightly smaller. I think the original one is actually uh, 5 8 on both sides, I think. So you just tighten that up till it goes tight and a quarter of a turn on top. That's all you need. Now tell a lie because the original is actually a little bit bigger than 5 8. So just for reference, if you are replacing it with a Harley Davidson original part, uh, obviously it'll be manufactured elsewhere, it's 11 16, so 5 8 and 11 16. And in typical Harley style of having a, a cross between a metric and imperial, your banjo bolt here on the brake line uh, is actually a perfect fit for a 12 mil spanner, okay, on the back of that. If you want to, you can replace the doughty washers on here just inspect them it's always a good idea to replace them which i have already done um, i keep a box of these all different sizes which we'll show you now so these are doughty washers so obviously i'm a plant engineer by day so these sort of things i use every day on hydraulic fittings and whatnot so always worthwhile just to replace the doughty washers on your brake banjo bolt and then you're safe then and good to go for another couple of years. Okay, so now we have to put the banjo back in the master cylinder. This is the, the bit that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So it's always handy first to put your wiring back on your switch as well, because you'll never get at it 
if you don't do it now. Okay, so that's the switch with the wires on. I've just sprayed a little bit of chain wax inside there, so that'll just help to keep any moisture out. And this is the fiddly part. Just make sure those wires are tucked out the way. And the secret is, is just to wobble it until you get the thread moving, and you can do that without even looking at it. Get that into position, and then we'll put the two bolts into here first, and then we'll tighten that up at the back. Okay, and the reason we leave this loose is you need a little bit of movement right to left. You've got to slide your rear brake rod back in to position. And then of course you need, if you tighten that up, you won't be able to move this to get your bolts in place. Okay, so the last step you want to do is just take off the top of your master cylinder and top that up with a touch of dot four brake fluid. Okay, for the next step, what we're going to do is just bleed through the rear. So if you look at what I've got here, it's a simple little bleeder. It's a one-way valve. So we've got a bit of tube onto your bleed nipple on the rear brake. Comes through here, and that's a one-way valve. So at the end of that tube, you just want to pop that into a bottle. We have used this before. Okay, once you've got that on, just crack open your rear brake bleed just like that just a quarter of a turn and then we go around to the other side okay so all we've got to do now is press the rear brake pedal pump it a few times the one-way valve will take care of the rest you'll find that it will go all the way down to the floor because we've opened up the valve just keep a little bit of pressure on There you go, absolutely perfect. So you can feel the pressure now back on the brake pedal. Okay, so when you pump a few times, you'll see the fluid working its way down. Just never let your master cylinder run out of fluid. So top that back up. And then we'll check the bottle on the other side. Okay, so you can see the fluid that's just gone into the bottle there. So what we're gonna do now is just tighten up the bleed screw and then just try the pedal. Okay, so that's absolutely perfect. And feel the pressure back on the brake pedal. Master cylinder's got fluid in it. So what we're gonna do now is put the master cylinder cap back on. So what we're gonna do now is see whether my hard work has paid off. Let's switch the bike on. Rear brake. There we go, folks. Absolutely fantastic. Another job done. Okay, so there you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed that. And that is the brake switch now fixed on my 48. So the only thing we've got to do to this now is a little bit of detailing work, get it ready for the coming season and an upcoming event. More on that soon. And it is due for a 15K service. So we'll do that on another vlog. So, hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time watching Al Komodo, please do hit that subscribe button. Please like the video and share and comment if you dare. But for now, let's start the bike up, give you guys a sound of the TBR on my 48. But thanks for watching.